urban legends that they have, the Maury Wills, the Don Newcomb, the Tommy Lasordas, these guys, Steve Garvey, all of these people are constantly around Dodger Stadium. And we see them all the time. Fans love seeing them. And I think that the Vin Scully, the Nancy B. Heffley, these people hold the Dodgers together. They're the glue of this team. And there's not a lot of franchises, you know, of course, the Yankees with the history, but have the great history that the Dodgers have. And I think that that's going to be a huge thing moving forward. I love Don Newcomb. He mentioned. I know, I know. We, we love Don Newcomb. We of love course. Don Newcomb here. Yes. Don, he is a friend of us. Yeah, Don Drysdale. Where, where do you where do you stop uh, drawing yeah, the line exactly. here? Exactly. And Mike Sosha, the angel uh, angel well, trader. Former, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. he is he is an all time classic too. This right. team has a lot of the all time classics. Yes. And they, they're they do still around. around though. That yeah. which is amazing. Tommy Lasorda. I love being in the press box and Lasorda drops by. And yes. Everyone likes it when Every Tommy night. drops by. Yeah. Whatever you were doing a minute ago, you stopped yeah, doing. He sort of takes over the room when he comes in. Well, I remember doing one game with you, and and Lasorda came in, and Vin Scully was taking his three innings off at the time he was working one through three and six through nine, uh, seven through nine. And uh, the two of them started talking baseball, and I got up from where you were sitting, and I said, "I'm not missing this." And I went and I listened to the two of them. I'm not missing Vince Scully and Tommy and Lasorda yeah, talking talk about baseball. Uh, and there are a lot of them. There are characters not of that stature, but but very close. Uh, Amazing. Uh, Fernando Valenzuela. Of course, and Fernando's there every night as well. And, yes, yeah, so you that, forget. Th this holds the fan base together. You see, okay, this is an extremely inconsistent time. This is a turbulent time. That's right. But, but no, you here's still Fernando. Ha exactly. How bad could it be? Fernando's it, here. It makes you feel better to see him every day. And, and other cities don't have that. And the Dodgers are fortunate to have that. It is unfortunate that this ownership mess happened, that, that, that this happened with the with the McCords, that their right. personal situation mm -hmm. leaked into not just the Dodgers, but really all of baseball. And, and, but it happened. It's happened with the Padres. The Mets are kind of in a mess right now. So, you know, you have to just kind of resolve these things, and that's the way it works. You the know? Mets are in a, it's an inexplicable mess with the Madoff uh, the thing. Yeah, but, but yeah, I hate to see baseball, on the field baseball, affected by affected this kind of by thing. It. But and they it still have happened. David Wright there, so it can't be too bad for the Mets. Oh, uh, we so, do you know. have our number one David Wright. That's right. Fan that's here, right. Yes, we? we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> now, Maury Wills, also another former Dodger who is here at spring training. He works with the guys. Always fun to catch up with. So, let's go catch up with Maury Wills. So are you having fun out here working with these uh, young Dodgers? Yeah, with these, <laughs> with these young Dodgers. Yes, uh, I love them. They love me. They do. See, they love me not because I know what I'm talking about when I'm teaching them, right. but because of the person I am. Right. You know, so, and that came from when I would, used to be in the minor leagues for the Dodgers, um, uh, not on the major league level, but in the minor league level. I go over to the minor league side over here too. Right. And those kids to see the little bug eyed kids. My wheels. But I remember when when I was a young player and and, and, the, and, and a, an instructor was standing behind me as I was hitting, and all of a sudden he said, Charlie, keep your, keep your back foot still. And he said it about three times, and I didn't know what to say. So finally I said, Sir, uh, uh, my, my name's not Charlie. It, it doesn't matter what your name is. And I felt so bad. He said, Just keep your back foot still. I felt so bad that he didn't know my name, didn't care to. Now I can come to camp with 80 baseball players. I only know about 40. And give me 10 days, a week to 10 days, and I got the other 40. Ooh. Because I know what it means to those players to be called by their name instead of, hey, you, or something like that. So, so my experience, um, you know what experience is all about. You have it. It really works for you. There's no substitute for experience. There's not. And it's interesting to me how when you talk about the young kids, you remember what that felt like to be in the minors, not to the majors yet. Yes, absolutely. And I also remember what it felt like when somebody would come up and, and, and praise me for a job well done. So when they when I'm teaching bunting out here in Maury's Pit and those pitchers lay down good bunts, I praise them. I stop and go and praise him right in front of everybody. And you know, like that. And that's that's healing, you know, and that that makes you progress quicker, better, sooner, whatever. Uh, you can reach your goal much quicker uh, if if there's a lot of positive feedback. That's right. Well, 104 stolen bases is pretty good for one year, you know. Yeah, my legs are telling me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I've had a total knee replacement on the right knee because that's the one I slid on. Uh, the left one is, is weak now because you kind of favor it, right. the other one. And um, I feel it when I retire at night, but I'm out here at 7.30 in the morning and I hang in here with these kids. That's right. uh, my, they might run 50 
to 75 players through my pit and then asked me to go over to the minor leagues afterwards, which I've been doing. And um, I'm tired when, it's, when the day comes to an end, but I, I feel so good that it's a job well done, Maury. And I go home and I sleep well and, and can't wait to get back the next day. You know, I think that's the most amazing thing is that your enthusiasm has never, ever changed for this game. No, it hasn't, never. See, I have a passion for the game. Um, if you're going to be a baseball player to start with, you need to have a passion if you're going to succeed. Moy will spent eight and a half years in the minor leagues, and there were times I couldn't eat in places where my teammates ate. I couldn't travel with my teammates. Um, I, a lot of things I couldn't do with my teammates. I had to be separate. And I was the only uh, African American player on the team, for instance, too. I'm going back a ways, and I was so I was all alone. And I know that feeling. Yeah. And um, so, so if you don't have a passion for the game, you can't get through that. Yeah. You can't get through. But nothing was going to deter. That's the word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. From my getting to the big leagues, I wanted to go to the Dodgers, not just the big leagues. I wanted to go to the Dodgers. That was because of Jackie Robinson. But I wanted to go to be a, I wanted to be a major league player, not because of Jackie Robinson. I wanted to be a major league player because a player from the Washington Senators came to our projects. Um, I'm talking about government uh, uh, um, housing, mm -hmm. uh, all black. This right. is in the '40s, right. and he's white. What is this? Because you know the, they lived over there. We lived over here. They lived over there, and all of a sudden here comes this man, nice uniform and everything, and he, he singled me out, and he spent at least an hour and a half with us, and he singled me out, and he and and, and he told the other kids to watch me, um, and I he bounced the ball to me. I got my little feet in place and picked it up and took a little cold hop, which you're supposed to do. That's shifting my weight, and threw the ball overhanded, which you're supposed to do because you get more accuracy and you get more velocity. And mm, I popped this mitt. And he said, wow, son, he said, that's pretty good. I was too young for anybody to have taught me that right. because I was only eight years old. Oh. So that was intuitive. I, I came out of the womb doing that. And, um, and, and when he said that to me, I knew then that wherever he came from, that's where I want to go. I didn't want to grow up. I had no future because none of us kids had futures right. in those days. Right. I, I, I didn't want to just get through school the best I could and then get a little old job doing nothing and getting married and have a house full of babies and it is like everybody else in that project and that's my life no I said I can be somebody I can do something wherever he came from that's where I wanted to go and uh, then later on I heard about Jackie Robinson with the Dodgers and people told me and I said I want to be a Dodger I was 14 by then then at 17, three years later, I signed my contract with the Dodgers. Wow. And in my heart, I'm a Dodger, and I've always been that way. I'm going to cry, so why don't we finish this up? Yeah.